Legends of Location. It's Prof G, and it's about time we figure out where we are, Swift UI style. We're going to work with Location Manager to get the device's location, and this will provide the basis for place lookup and plotting locations on a map, which we'll cover in future lessons. Let's locate the big learning. Now, while this lesson is part of the Snacktacular app, it can also be watched independently because over the next few lessons, we're going to create a small demonstration app. First to get the device's location, then in the next lesson, we'll use this as part of getting the place lookup, where we return a name, address, latitude, and longitude of places that we search for in a search field. And once we get this built, you'll have a project that you can return to anytime you want to grab location or place lookup code, and we'll eventually raid this project for code and add it to our Snacktacular app. So launch Xcode and create a new app named Location and Place Lookup. I'll adjust my screen, and I like to convert my folder to a group. I know it's a bit controversial. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I like my app file up top and my content view after it. And we're going to start by creating a class called Location Manager. So I'm going to right click on my app file and select New File from Template. And this is going to be a Swift file, not a Swift UI view. Now we're going to use features available on MapKit. So we're going to import MapKit. You might see some tutorials mention that you can import core location. MapKit includes everything that's in core location plus some MapKit stuff. I'm noticing I imported Swift UI here. You didn't have to do that. No real harm if you did. Now this is going to use the at observable macro. So put that in there and we'll say class location manager upper camel case colon and here we need to enter ns object the reason for that is some of the data structures we're going to use are really old in fact the ns stands for next step it's a legacy of when apple bought the next computer company that was run by steve jobs at the time that deal was finalized in 1997 so that was older than most of my students so the ns stands for next step which was the next computer operating system that became part of an upgraded mac os that was based on a unix kernel many were skeptical of the move that brought back jobs to Apple. Here's a Fortune article by Stuart Alsop that said that the move missed the mark. That's probably the worst headline this guy ever wrote because Apple turned around to become the most valuable and profitable company on the planet, and it was the greatest corporate turnaround in business history. And yes, I've met both Steve and Johnny. In fact, we've been to the last six product launches when Steve was still alive. That includes the original iPhone launch where one of my students was sitting next to Sergey Brin from Google. We're very lucky to have a close relationship with Apple at Boston College. Much of that stems from the great Phil Schiller, who's a Boston College graduate and a Boston College trustee. But let's continue to code. So after the comma, and we're going to conform to CL Location Manager Delegate. Make sure you get that right in there. You can open and close curlies afterward. Now, by including CL Location Manager Delegate after the colon, we're indicating that we're using features that Apple has defined but not filled out, and that iOS can call these functions when it needs our code to perform tasks. Now this class is going to be pretty reusable, but I'm going to put a comment in here that says critically important. Always add info.plist message for privacy location when in use usage description. Now Apple is very dedicated to user privacy and there are some features that app developers simply cannot use in their apps until they get the user's permission. Access to the device location is one of these. You've probably used apps that have specifically asked you to grant location access. So I'm going to show you how to set this up and we'll see in a bit how this works in our app. Now, if you ever forget the step I'm about to show you with the info P list, your app won't work properly and you'll probably see some errors in the console. So open the project navigator and click on the project icon at the top. The target of your app should be selected and click on info in the tab above. Then you can click the line in the bottom of the list and click the little plus sign. Now we want to find the setting for privacy when in use usage description. If you type privacy, you'll see all the different privacy entries and then you can scroll, but make sure you're selecting the one that says location when in use usage description. Now with that selected over in the value area is where you enter a message that you want to show up when you ask your user for permission for their location. I'll just enter this app requires access to the device's location. So that's it for the info P list, but that's a vital step. Never forget it. So head back to your location manager class and now we'll create a property to hold the location our longitude and latitude. So we'll say var location colon and that's of type CL location code completion says among other things. This has the latitude and longitude. We'll put a question mark after it because sometimes we won't have a location. We're also going to create a location manager below this and we're only going to use this inside the location manager class. So we'll say private it let location manager equals CL location manager open and close parens and then we'll create an initializer now we're gonna add stuff on top of whatever Apple usually puts in here for its initializer so we're gonna say override init open and close parens open and close curlies 
so the override keyword takes precedence over any other function which exists. We're going to start off with super dot init open and close parens. That's going to give us all the Apple goodness, but to that we'll add a few property initializers below. We'll say location manager dot desired accuracy, and we'll set that to, and the value is kind of gnarly, it's KCL location accuracy best. The K is supposed to stand for a constant, believe it or not. This just means we want the location manager to try to give us the best accuracy that it can. Next, we'll say location manager dot delegate equals self. That means Apple can delegate tasks like specific functions to us in this class. More on that in a bit. Then below this, we'll say location manager dot request when in use authorization, open and close parens. This is going to pop up that little alert that asks the user to authorize location access in the app. And then below this, we'll say location manager dot start updating location, open and close parens. That'll get your location. Now below this, we're going to put in the delegate methods. And what I mean by that is these are methods or functions that Apple has defined and it will call, but it hasn't filled out the body of the function. It's up to the developer to do that. And the reason why Apple doesn't fill it out is because each individual app developer might do something different when Apple declares something has happened. For example, here we're going to set up a function that Apple will call when there's a new location update. What does each app do when it gets a new location? That's going to vary by app. That's why Apple delegates what to do back to us. They've created the function, but they haven't put what's inside of it. The app developer needs to tell Apple what it should do. Now we could put our functions inside the main body of the code, but I like to organize my delegate functions in an extension. So I'm going to say extension location manager, open and close curlies. And I'm going to start typing in location manager did update locations. And you see this one option will show up here. Code completion says this tells the delegate that the new location data is available. So what's the delegate for location manager tasks? Well, up here, we said location manager dot delegate equals self, meaning this class self, the class we're in, can have tasks delegated to it from Apple's operating systems when certain things occur. So in this example, an Apple operating system has a new location. It wants to call this function. We're going to tell it what to do inside that function. So press return to accept this. And there are actually several locations that could be passed into this function as an array. See this value up here, locations, which is an array of type CL location. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say guard let new location equals location dot last else open and close curlies with return inside. There really shouldn't be any reason why Apple calls this and doesn't pass any locations in, but we've got to deal with a nil option anyway. After we run this line, we've got our last location, which should be our most accurate location in this constant named new location. Then we'll just assign this to the location property of this class by saying location equals new location. Sometimes you might want to just get the location once instead of repeatedly checking for the location. So you can uncomment the line below if you only want to get the location once. So I'm going to say manager dot stop updating location open and close parens, but it's commented out here because I always want to get my location. And now we're going to head over to our content view. And this is where we'll just print out our longitude and latitude. And again, we're going to get the exact location, place names, and addresses in the next lesson. Right now, we just want to get that longitude and latitude. So to create a location manager that we can use in this view, we'll say at state var location manager equals upper camel case location manager, open close parens. That'll initialize a new location manager for us. And then I can delete the image in the V stack. I don't want that. But in the text view, in the string, why don't we put in string interp, comma, string interp. And for the first string interp, we'll say location manager dot location. This is of type CL location. It has a property called dot coordinate. This is of type CL location coordinate 2D. And it says this is the geographical coordinate information. And from here, we're going to get the property dot latitude. So we'll say dot latitude. And unsurprisingly, there's a longitude as well. Now Xcode tells us the location portion of this statement could be nil. Why don't we deal with this with nil coalescing? So we'll select that. It wants a default value, but what should the type be? Well, I'm going to option click on top of latitude, and it tells me that's a CL location degrees. Now you might say, I don't know what type that number should be. Well, here's something sneaky. If I click on CL location degrees here, Here's information for CL location degrees. It says it's a type alias and it actually equals double. So you could declare this value as a double if you wanted to. The only reason it uses this special name, the type alias CL location degrees, is it's sort of a reinforcing indicator for any software developer that, hey, we're working with core location here. That said, if I get back a nil, I'm just going to pass back a 0.0. .0. Then I'll highlight and copy this whole line and paste it into the second string interp, but I'll change latitude to longitude. And hey, look at this. I've got a latitude and longitude showing up. Now this is 37.33 and change, comma, minus 1.0. 
122.00 and change. What's that? Let's find out, my friends. Below this, I'm going to use our sneaky print trick by saying let underscore equals print. In between parentheses, I'm just going to copy what's inside the parentheses of the text up here, paste it below, and frankly, you may or may not see something printing to the console in the preview. The preview is notably flaky, at least in the version of Xcode that I'm using, when it comes to location. So I advise that you always build and run and work in the simulator. Let's do that. Hammer time, no errors. And we see longitude and latitude printed out in the console. I'm going to highlight and copy these values. And then I'm going to go to the browser and I'm going to head to Google Maps and I'm going to paste this value into the search for Google Maps. And hey, this is showing infinite loop. That's Apple's former world headquarters. It's currently Apple Park, which is right down the street, but Apple continues to own this complex. I've been here many times. Curiously, and I have no idea why, but in the simulator, the default is Apple Park, not one infinite loop. That may very well have changed by the time you're using this. Apple Park is the spaceship, the huge building that's in the shape of a circle. So you might wonder, hey, can you use your own locations in the simulator? You absolutely can, my friend. I'm going to enter the location where I work, Fulton Hall, Boston College. There's the place indicator exactly where I am. I'm going to right click on top of this. And hey, there are the coordinates. Selecting this copies these numbers to the clipboard. And if you head in the simulator under the features menu, there's a location sub menu. Now, one of the options in here is custom location. And if you select this, I've already got this value in here, but you you can paste in the latitude and longitude. When I click OK, I can see that my app is updated with a new latitude and longitude. It's also printing that down below. Nice. Now, there are some other cool things you can do up here under Features Location. You can see that there's an option, for example, for City Run, City Bike Ride. You can select Freeway Drive. And this just simulates the speed of a moving vehicle around traffic near where Apple's headquarters is in Cupertino. Cool. But I'm going to go back to my custom location. Feel free to put in any location that you'd like. And at this point, I want to do a little bit more to our location manager class so that it becomes a little more robust and a little more reusable. So head back over to location manager. And one thing that would be useful would be to report back any errors that might occur. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to create a new variable var error message colon. And that's going to be a string question mark because sometimes this will be nil. Most of the time you shouldn't get errors. But Apple provides us with a delegate method that will report the error back to us. So underneath our location manager function for did update locations, I'm going to start to type in location manager did fail. I see a few options up here. Select the option did fail with error. And code completion says this tells the delegate it, meaning the operating system tells our class, since it's the delegate, that the location manager was unable to retrieve the location value. Press return. The function definition is entered for us. Now the function passes in the error. We want to put that in the error message that we just created above. So we'll say error message equals error dot localized description. That'll get the string out of the error. Now you could do lots of different things when you get an error. You could put up an alert if you wanted to. I don't want to do anything that's that drastic. So I'll just print angry emoji map emoji to draw my attention to the fact that this happened in the location manager. And I'll say error location manager string interp error message and error message could be a nil. So I'll use nil coalescing with double question mark and pass in the string n slash a. But actually this function is only called if you have an error. So I'm never going to see n slash a. I'm always going to get an error if this function is called. Still, this is type safe Swift, so you got to deal with the possibility of a nil. So now we're reporting errors, but we should also deal with the situations that might happen with authorization. For example, up here in init, the location manager calls a request when in use authorization, and then it starts updating the location. But lots of different things might happen as part of the authorization process. The user might deny authorization. The user might go into the settings and take authorization away. Authorization might have been denied, but then the user decides to update it. So let's create a variable that can hold the authorization status. And we'll also write a function that can deal with all the authorization possibilities. So we'll say var authorization status. And Apple actually has a type with an enumeration of all of the different authorization statuses. That type is colon CL authorization status, and we'll set this initially equal to dot not determined. And Apple's got another delegate method we can use that can update the authorization status. I'm going to head down here to my extension, and just above that error function we just wrote, I'm going to enter location manager did change, and we see did change authorization is an option here. Now there's a deprecated function in here. You don't want to choose that. Choose this one, location manager did change authorization. That's all one word. Code completion says this tells the delegate when the app creates the location manager and when the authorization status changes. Press return. This is what we want. 
and the first thing we'll do is update the authorization status property we just created with authorization status equals manager dot authorization status so manager is the core location manager that's passed into this function and then to deal with all the different cases that could occur in the authorization status we'll just say switch manager dot authorization status open and close curlies and predictive code completion will try to fill this out for you. I don't recommend that you accept the options because at least as of my recording, the recommendations from AI are incorrect. So I'll enter as my first case dot authorized when in use comma dot authorized always colon. So if either of these two cases return under this, we'll just print out location manager authorization granted and we'll execute the method manager dot start updating location open and close parens. Now in the next case, we'll say dot denied comma dot restricted colon. And if either of those things occur, we'll just say print location manager authorization denied. Now we'll also update our error message. We'll say error message equals, and this will be the string angry emoji. And I'll put the map pin in here just to remind us where this is occurring. And I'll say location manager access denied. And below this, I'll also say manager dot stop updating location open and close parens because I don't want to try to get the location again if I'm denied. Now below this, there's another case dot not determined colon and if this occurs I'll just print out location manager authorization not determined notifying me that that has happened isn't really a big deal I mean this happens every time you first run your app and you've never selected the authorization and so what we'll do in this case is just call manager dot request when in use authorization open and close parens then below this and you know I think we've got all of them if we say case dot let's take a look not determined authorize always authorize when in use denied restricted yep that's it now just in case we're gonna put a default case in here colon and below this we'll say manager dot request when in use authorization now you might say hey if you've gone through all of the different enumerations you'll never hit default right that is correct but let me show you a tip Apple is in charge of these enumerations now it's entirely possible that Apple might update its enumeration and and put in a new case at some point. I can't imagine what that would be, but I'm not Apple. So back in Swift 5, there was an update that allowed you to put in a statement that would catch any case that hadn't appeared. It's just the at sign unknown put just before the default keyword. That's unknown in lowercase, and unfortunately there's not a good description up here. Now there is a pretty good description here in this blog called Swiftly. I think this is a guy named Lee who codes in Swift. Nice name. And down here in the section, the difference between default and unknown default is the main difference is that the compiler will produce a warning if all the known elements of the enum have not been matched. Now that can be super useful. Imagine you're updating your app and there's been a new version of the Worldwide Developer Conference and you weren't aware that there's a new enumeration. Your app won't crash. But as a developer, you'll be pointed to something that you might want to deal with. That's it. At unknown isn't a big deal, but it's a nice thing to put in, especially in cases where somebody else is in charge of the enumeration. So I think these are all the updates we want to do right now for our location manager, but let's see some of these things in action. So build and run, hammer time, no errors. I'm looking at my custom location. And now let's mess with those authorization settings. So I'm gonna click on the home button and I'm gonna head over to our settings and I'm gonna find privacy and security, click this. Then I'll click Location Services, and I see the Location and Place Lookup app that we're working on. If I click that, I can see that it's currently selected to allow location access while using the app. Well, what happens if we click Never? We just change the authorization status. I'll double click on the Home button, head back over to the app, and oh, look, we get an error down here. Location Manager, the operation couldn't be completed. We get the localized error description in there too, the KCL error domain error one. So you can look that up if you need to find out more information. Now let's see what happens if we quit out of the simulator and we rerun. Ooh, and we get nothing but zeros for our latitude and longitude. We also see that error down here. The operation could not be completed. Let's tap that home button again and head back over to settings and get back into privacy and security. Head to location services, click on our location and place lookup app. We can see it's never. Let's change this back to while using app. Double tap that home button, pull the app back up. Ah, and look at that magic. I see my custom location showing up down below and in my app. So Swifter, hopefully you found this useful to learn how to get user location. We've built a location manager class that you should be able to copy and paste into other apps and use in similar ways. Up next, we're gonna code a location lookup search so we can find the names and addresses of places. And when we're done with that, we'll take the latitude and longitude that's returned as part of our place lookup and we'll plot that on a map. Stay swift, you lucky location legends. There's more goodness to come.